All right, everybody, how's it going? We got to talk about this debate over in Pennsylvania. It was between John Fetterwoman and Dr. Oz. Well, <clears throat> the what's it called? The results are in. The clear victor of the debate is Dr. Oz himself, the famous world renowned doctor. He received 82% of the vote, uh, and only 18% believe that John Fetterwoman ended up winning this debate. Uh, so yeah, 82% to John Fetterwoman's 18%, that's pretty pathetic. That means he got creamed. And there have been other polls that I've interacted with, and every single one of them, Dr. Oz has convincingly won, has enthusiastically won the, the debates. Uh, this is expected from yours truly. Uh, Dr. Oz is just, uh, you know, the guy is almost a linguist. He's, uh, you know, he knows how to work a camera. He's, he seems like a genuinely nice guy, and it showed. Uh, he did an, here, here's what he did really well. John Fetterwoman was really, really struggling to, to speak and, you know, make a, uh, you know, craft a coherent sentence and, uh, you know, communicate effectively. He was really, really struggling because he had that severe stroke. Um, Dr. Oz was insanely professional and courteous the entire time. I know that's not what some of us want to hear or, uh, want to see, but, uh, again, this is a guy who's running for U.S. Senate. There were a lot of eyeballs on this debate. Uh, Dr. Oz handled himself very, very well. He didn't cower or hide or play games. He, you know, he took on, uh, very difficult questions head on. Uh, he was just incredibly brave in my in my opinion. Uh, the, the same cannot be said for uh, John Fetterwoman, who's kind of a coward. He's kind of a weasel guy. He and again, this happened for like the tenth time. John Fetterwoman, a long, long time ago, he pointed a gun at an innocent uh, black male, uh, who John Fetterman accused of being involved in some sort of shooting. So he aimed a shotgun at the at the chest of this this individual. And, uh, and obviously the guy, the guy was innocent. He wasn't involved, yada, yada, yada. And uh, in the primary debates, they were uh, the uh, Fetterman's opponents were trying to get him to apologize and to admit wrongdoing. John Fetterman never admitted to any wrongdoing. And again, uh, this was brought up again tonight. And me personally, I, didn't, I don't put a lot of stock in that story, uh, you know, but it, it seems to have an impact. Um, again, just because it doesn't work on me, doesn't mean it's not going to work on the majority of Pennsylvania voters or uh, a certain demographic of Pennsylvania voters. Um, Richard Barris of the People's Pundit has stated that, you know, the, the black turnout for Fetterman and, and his party is not looking good in Philadelphia. That is really, really bad. Does this story have something to do with it? It might. Uh, again, John Fetterwoman is running from this specific story. He refuses to take accountability and it was brought up. Bravo to Dr. Oz for doing so, and he did it very, very well. He snuck it in there, and uh, you know John Fetterwoman was not able to you know rebut it accordingly. He just kind of weaseled around it. It was it was pretty masterful. Uh, so kudos to Dr. Oz. What I didn't like that uh, about Dr. Oz was omitting or, or not sneaking in the fact that uh, John Fetterwoman has hired two convicted murders, two confirmed murders. Two individuals who literally killed an innocent person. I'm talking about the Horton brothers. These men are guilty. They are 100% guilty. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. You want to fucking argue with me? Uh, you know, post your turn on your location. And we'll meet up. Because uh, you know, I'm just so sick of the of the modern left making excuses and apologizing for these violent criminals and getting them out of 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 the of the slammer and then hiring them to work on their campaign sending them out to canvas into the real world endangering people uh and again this is what the, this is the democratic uh, the democratic party's mo they want to to do the bail reform they're getting these violent criminals out of jail and they're getting them out of prison and they're and they're it's 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 part of like this uh, recruitment scheme these are their foot soldiers and, and they're and they're going out to bat for them and this is happening in real time. The Horton brothers are 100% guilty. There is zero evidence whatsoever to suggest that the Horton brothers are innocent because they're not innocent at all. Their innocence is not even uh, was not communicated uh, during the during uh, during before or after the commutation of their sentence. Their their guilt is maintained. As far as I'm concerned, Governor Wolf did not uh, state or suggest that the Horton brothers did not commit that heinous act. They did. And uh, John Fetterman has been lying about it reliably. The good thing is, 
Uh, Dr. Oz is slamming him and has been slamming him about the Horton brothers on Twitter and in TV ads. And, uh, you know, whenever he has the opportunity to speak before a large crowd and it's live streamed and all that good stuff, uh, he is taking the opportunity to do that. However, there were a lot of eyeballs on this race and uh, Dr. Oz did not deliver on the Horton brother scandal. Very unfortunate. I would have liked to have seen Dr. Oz go in there and talk about the Horton brothers, talk about the fact that they've lost every single appeal, and there's not a single shred of evidence to suggest that these people are innocent and that second chances are important, but we should not give second chances to people who murder innocent lives or take innocent lives. Uh, but beyond that, I was one of the first people, one of the first content creators to stick their necks out for uh, Dr. Oz. I said, let's give him a chance. I said, we need to go full steam ahead and support Dr. Oz. And he's going to be the one to take us home. And uh, and, this, and this is what I saw. Uh, I, I see somebody who's ready for prime time. I see somebody who's taking this very, very seriously. And, uh, you know, some of his ads were cheesy. Some of his ads were corny. But again, I'm like an edge lord. Uh, you know, I'm a political dissident. I'm a little more, more on the fringe. And uh, my, my humor, my style is a little bit more out there. I'm not very, uh, I'm not as aligned uh, with, with like with, with the, the so-called normies. Uh, so they're likely receiving Dr. Oz's message a lot better than I would. But nonetheless, I support Dr. Oz because President Trump supports Dr. Oz. And it's really, really important that we all rally behind, uh, you know, his, his candidates, his, his endorsed, uh, you know, uh, candidates. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's basically it. And and again, I, I find Dr. Oz charming. I find him to be insanely professional. And if Herschel Walker, Dr. Oz, Blake Masters, J.D. Vance, uh, you know, Ron Johnson and, and you know, and, and, a, and a handful of other uh, senators, if these guys stick together, if they stick to Adam Laxalt, let's throw him in there because he, he literally might win. If these guys stick together, they will be an unstoppable force and they're going to change the conversation in this country. And and, and Dr. Oz is certainly going to be a part of that. He he seems like the, you know, the same warm, fuzzy, welcoming uh, uh, aspect of the of the, the dissident right, if you will. Uh, he worked for President Trump and then he continued to to stay in that role that he was given or that he that he worked in and then he was fired by by Joe Brandon and now he's coming back as a US senator and you know, hopefully he he ends up uh, you know getting in there and making and, and putting a stop to the to the Brandon regime and and their and their their their, their lunacy uh, but yeah this is a this is a fantastic debate this is a fantastic debate i am insanely impressed I liked everything uh, for the most part that I saw. There were a few things that, you know, again, Dr. Oz could have done a little bit better. Uh, some of his answers were a little too, you know, warm and fuzzy for my taste. But, uh, yeah, uh, John Fetterman, is, he, he's not ready for prime time. Uh, even if, you know, and again, you know, you know, what's interesting is that, like, you know, he was being slammed. Uh, Fetter woman was being slammed because of the stroke. And people were, were saying, you do not look like you're physically fit. You don't look like you're physically fit to do this job. You need to be able to communicate effectively. You need to be able to listen effectively uh, to what people are saying to you. And you're going to be, you know, passing legislation. You're going to be debating legislation. You're going to have to be reading, uh, you know, uh, complex documents r regarding policy that's going to impact the entire country. You're not physically fit is what people were saying to Fetterman. Fetterman comes out and responds, oh, well, I'm totally fit. I got this letter from my doctor. I got this you know, statement from this other doctor. I got, you know, look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking before crowds of, you know, uh, 10 people or a thousand people or whatever, 300 people. Um, okay. Well, all right. So we're just going to take him out. If we take him at his word, he's totally healthy. He's totally fit. He can totally do the job. Everything else that we've seen with the stroke and the gaps, et cetera, be damned. Uh, what I saw was somebody who's not ready for prime time. Fetterman is not ready. Uh, he he got completely fucking crushed. If I'm treating Fetterman the way that he wants to be treated, I'm not looking at the at the the stroke that happened quite a few months ago. Admittedly, it happened quite a few months ago. However, he relies on a machine to communicate effectively, which was present at this debate. Um, and a lot of people got to see this. They got to see it with their own eyes. And John Fetterman is a pathetic coward. He's a fucking weasel. Uh, he should have done this debate prior to people uh, voting in the first place, uh, but it's too late now. However, there there's a handful of undecideds, quite a few undecideds. I think what the six, seven, ten percent of the individuals uh, in Pennsylvania that are undecided, they're going to be the ones 
that carried Doug Mastriano to the finish line, carry uh, uh, Dr. Oz over to the finish line, and they're going to get this thing done, and they're going to secure the, uh, you know, the, the whole electoral process in Pennsylvania, which is absolutely important, and that needs to happen all over the country. I'm hoping, I'm praying that it happens here in Nevada. There was also a debate that I did not get to see, which was uh, uh, Lee Zeldin versus uh, Governor Hochul or whatever her sleeping name is. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. So uh, did anybody else see the debate? What did you guys think about it? Who do you think won? Am I right? Am I wrong? Uh, I think I'm pretty, uh, I think I, I hit the nail on the head here. I think Dr. Oz is, uh, I think he's one of us. I think he's going to take this thing all the way and uh, he's, he's going to make it across the finish line one way or another. And uh, again, I know there were like a couple other people that were probably, uh, you know, a little bit better than he would have been. But, uh, you know, he, he's the guy. He's the guy. He's there. And, and I think he's proven himself. I think he did a really, really great job. I'm insanely impressed by him. And, uh, you know, my, my, my videos, my, my commentary on Dr. Oz is aging like fine wine. I know a lot of people don't like that he's like, you know, the the he's part of the Oprah ecosystem of media figures. And, you know, he... He's had some stupid opinions in the past, and but you know who knows if those are like genuine opinions that he's held, or if it was just you know like this is just part of TV showbiz, and he had to say this. It was a it was a part of a script, yada yada yada. Uh, I don't really know. It doesn't matter. People change, and uh, I think we should be given a chance. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Peace. <laughs>